Hey, welcome to another example on force components. So in this example, we have this structural system here. There is this wall at CD, and there is this member ABC that is attached to the wall at point C here, and it is supported by this member BD. Now, on this member ABC, there is a force S that's acting straight downwards from point A. So it's it's pulling this ABC member downward. And the member that's resisting that downward movement is this member BD. So BD is helping support this member ABC from rotating downwards. Now, I've drawn in some angles here, 50 and 60 uh, degrees. And the problem statement says that member BD exerts a force B onto member ABC. So this member right here is exerting some force called B onto that ABC member. Now, knowing that B, so this force right here, must have a 750 Newton component perpendicular to member ABC, we need to find out two things, the magnitude of force B and the component that is parallel to ABC of force B. So let's let's break down these directions here because this might be a little bit different from what you've studied in the past where we're dealing with coordinate systems that are vertical and horizontal. In this case, we know that that force B has a 750 Newton component that is perpendicular to member ABC. So here is member ABC. And that force component that we're talking about, that 750 Newton force, is going to be perpendicular to that member. In other words, it's going to make a 90 degree angle with this member ABC. And knowing that, that's where we need to figure out what this B force is, the magnitude of B. Now, for the second part, the component that's parallel to ABC, again, here is ABC, and we need to figure out what the component of this force B is that is parallel to this line. So our axis is sort of shifted a little bit, and it's not exactly this straight X and Y axis that we've always been looking at. It's sort of shifted like this, where we have ABC here, and then we have another axis, or axis that's running perpendicular to ABC. So don't worry, we'll get through all that. Let's start off uh, this problem one piece at a time. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to draw the free body diagram of this other diagram that I've drawn up here. So this free body diagram, what I'm really focused on is the axis of ABC. So if we know that the line of action for ABC is running this way, what I can do is I can draw that axis here. So I can draw a line that is going to go through points A, B, and C. So if I drew this vertical line right here, I know that this is 60 degrees, just like it is in this diagram right here. So points A, B, and C are going to be somewhere along this line. So you can have, you know, point B here, A is somewhere over here, and then you have obviously point C somewhere here. So this axis that I've drawn is not the member itself, but the line of action that's going through this member right now. So Okay, so now that I've drawn that, let's go ahead and draw force B. So force B is going to be acting along the line of member BD. So if I go back to our free body diagram, I can sort of write or sort of uh, depict that force to be acting this way. So I can say that this is force B and the angle that it makes with this uh, B, A, B, C line is going to be some angle alpha. Well, what is that angle alpha? Let's figure that out, and that might give us a little bit more information to solve this problem. So let's go back to this diagram right here and state that, again, the alpha angle is this angle right here, and we know that this right here is a triangle, right? So we have this angle alpha, we have this other angle here at C, and then we have this other angle here at D. Well, if we look at point D, we know that this line is perpendicular to this line. So that means that this angle right here is 90 degrees. And if this angle right here is 50, well, 90 minus 50 gives us 40. So that angle right there has to be 40. So I can just fill that in and say that's 40 degrees. Now, for this angle right here, we know that this line is vertical. And this line runs right through C and that line makes a 60 degree angle with this vertical. So if this entire line is 180 degrees this way, 
I can say that this angle right here is 180 minus 60. And 180 minus 60 is 120. So I can draw this angle to be 120 degrees. And if I know the sum of all the angles of this triangle, the interior angles must be equal to 180 degrees, I can state that 180 degrees is equal to alpha plus 120 degrees plus 40 degrees. And again, I'm getting these values here, alpha, 120, and 40. Now, if I solve for alpha, I get alpha is equal to 20 degrees. So awesome. That is our alpha angle. That is this angle right here. And that certainly will come in handy just a little later on. Now, let's go back to the problem and see uh, how we can figure out the magnitude of force B. Well, the problem statement says that we have a 750 Newton component that is perpendicular to member ABC. So if this is ABC right here, we have a perpendicular member here that's going to be 750 Newtons. So going back to our diagram down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another axis that is going to be perpendicular to member ABC. So if I draw this line right here, I can state that this angle right here is going to be 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So this is a 90 degree angle. And the reason that line is important, that axis is important, is because we know that one of the components of B is going to be perpendicular to ABC. So it's going to be parallel to this axis that I've drawn right here. So in other words, you can sort of see that this B force is going to have a component acting perpendicular to line ABC. So let's go ahead and draw that out. So I'm going to very roughly sketch that force in. And I will say that this force, this force right here is, let's just call it B1. And B1 refers to the perpendicular force of B that's acting on ABC. Now, there is another force component for B, and that is a force component that's parallel to ABC. So there's going to be another force component right there, and I can draw that in as well. So that right here, I will say that is, let's just call it B2. And B2, again, is just the parallel component to this ABC line for force B. Now let me move this little B over here so it's a little easier to see. Now you'll notice that the sides B1 and B2 make a 90 degree angle with this axis that I've drawn here. And that's good because now we can figure out the interior angles for this triangle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here and I'm going to say, well, if this angle right here was alpha, and alpha we calculated here to be this 20 degrees, if that angle right there is alpha, then I know that this angle right here is 70 degrees. And if that is 70 degrees and this is 90 degrees, then that means this angle right here must be 20 degrees. Why? Because you have this parallel line here, and then you have this parallel line here, and then you have this traversal running through them. And if both of these lines are parallel, again, this angle and this angle are interior and opposite angles. So if this is alpha, this must also be alpha. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this as 20 degrees. Now, why is this important? Well, I said that if this side right here, this component right here is B1, then I can use this triangle to figure out what B1 is. So over here, I can say that the sine of 20 degrees is going to be opposite, which is this side right here, over the hypotenuse. So in other words, sine of 20 uh, is this B1, the magnitude of B1, over the magnitude of B. Now, in the problem statement, we actually know what B1 is. It is this 750 Newton component that is perpendicular to line ABC. So B1 is 750 Newtons. So I can say that this is 750 Newtons over B. Now, if I rewrite this equation in terms of B, I could say that B is equal to 750 Newtons divided by sine of 20 degrees. Now, if I solve this out, we get a value of B to be about, uh, let's do that here, B is about uh, 2193 Newton. So there is the magnitude of B. And that takes care of this first part of the question. Uh, what is the magnitude of force B? 
Now let's move on to the second part, the component that's parallel to ABC of force B. So the component that's parallel to ABC, which is this line right here, is this B2 component. And that B2 component is the parallel component of force B that's parallel to ABC. So we can do something similar. Uh, again, we're just using trigonometry in this triangle that we've drawn to figure out these different components. So for B2, I could say that the cosine of 20 degrees, right? This angle right here, this is 20 degrees. The cosine of that angle is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is the magnitude of B2 over the magnitude of B. Now in this equation, B2 is our unknown. And we figured out B in the last part. It was this 2193 Newton. So I can just take that value, plug it in for B, and solve for B2. So in other words, I can rewrite this equation as B times cosine of 20 degrees is equal to B2. Now if I just take 2193 and I plug it into B and I punch that into our calculator, we get a value of B2, the magnitude of B2, is about 2060 one newton. So there is our magnitude for B2. And that takes care of this second part of the question. So again, even though this diagram might seem a little uh, crazy at first, you just have to remember where you draw your axes on. And once you can figure that out, then you can draw in the components and then use trigonometry like we've been doing to figure out the different parts of this question. So great job.